History of the Church, I'm Adam Crispin. And I'm Jonathan McCormick. An Oral History of the Church is a conversational history podcast. This first volume is an oral history of the campus relocation of Golden Gate Baptist Theological Seminary's main campus from Mill Valley, California to Ontario, California. The eighth episode for this volume is an interview with pastor, blogger, podcaster, husband, father, and Ph.D. student in <laughs> Old Testament, Jared Jenkins. Uh, he seems like a busy guy. Yeah, well, he'd be busier if he was part of the queen of the sciences studying theology. Well, we won't hold uh, his <laughs> biblical studies work against him. <laughs> well, I appreciate that very much as a biblical studies major myself. Um, now, Jared is an interesting contribution to this history because of his um, perspective as someone who is from Utah, who uh, isn't right next to all the things that Golden Gate does, isn't intimately tied with campus life or being in, in this example, the San Francisco region or in the, the L.A. area around Brea mm -hmm. or what have you with the other campuses. And at the same time, uh, he, he came here for years, not as a student. Yeah, he came here for the, the missions conference, got to know the, the institution, and now comes here as a Ph.D. student. Uh, for those who aren't familiar with the structure of Golden Gate Seminary's PhD program, we have a modular program. There's one week at the beginning of a semester where we have hopefully read all of our books and materials and mm -hmm. understood them. And done all the translating you need to do, writing you need to do, whether that's book reviews or other papers. That was a lot of translating for historiography, <laughs> but that's another day. <laughs> yes, it was. Um, and he flies in for those weeks, and then for three weekends over the course of the semester, you fly in, you, again, hopefully have done your book reviews, your responses to other people's papers, mm -hmm. you've hopefully read the other papers. <laughs> You've hopefully written a paper that is not your dissertation. Um, and then mm -hmm. we discuss them mm -hmm. and rinse, repeat right. until you finish seminars. That's right. So he's nearing that the end of that phase, uh, which is very good for him. It is much easier to focus on one longer project than many smaller, <laughs> a slightly higher stress projects in a certain way. Uh, so Jonathan, what would you point out as uh, interesting bits, other than what we've already mentioned here, for the listener to, to pay attention to? One of the things that I think a Christian institution provides is a cultural landmark for its denomination. Mm -hmm. um, Golden Gate has been part of this for for the West, and it's interesting to hear the impact of this cultural work that Golden Gate has done uh, for Southern Baptists. Uh, I really appreciate that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for myself, I I found it very interesting the the perspective he has on on the campus as someone who has come here quite a bit over the years and yet hasn't lived here in the, either the actual campus residences yeah. or uh, in the nearby uh, neighborhoods or, or, or towns. I thought that was particularly interesting. So I think it's a very encouraging interview. It's a uh, a uh, slightly odd one for us. Uh, I couldn't make it to the beginning of the the meeting we had scheduled, unfortunately. But I did get to come in for about the second half of it or so. Uh, three quarters. Something like that. On that note, let's listen to Jared Jenkins. Okay. Uh, mind if I take it back? Oh, yeah, yeah, that's fine. Yeah, so you know what you're... Yeah. Um, 
And if for some reason you decide a neural history project is interesting and something you'd want to do with your church or something, yeah. let us know and we can help you walk through yeah, the process no, that's, on how that's to do cool. it. Yeah, that's cool. This is Jonathan McCormick interviewing Jared Jenkins on May 4th, 2016. The interview is taking place in the Medium Conference Room in the library of Golden Gate Baptist Theological Seminary at 201 Seminary Drive, Mill Valley, California, 94941. Uh, Adam Christman is not uh, in this interview. Jared, thanks for taking the time to sit down with me. Uh, we're we're really excited about this interview, and uh, yeah. it's gonna be gonna be good. Yeah. When did how did you first hear about Golden Gate Seminary? Um, my my first interaction with Golden Gate Seminary was I went to uh, Glorietta Student Week, which Lifeway has put on every year for a long time. Um, in 19, the summer of 1999. Okay. Yeah. And they were, they ran an ad for, uh, a missions thing they were doing called E-Teams, uh, where they were collecting college students, preparing them and sending them out on mission trips. And so, uh, me and my friend saw the ad at Glorietta and were like, we should do that. And so we did. <laughs> sounds, sounds worthwhile. Yeah. Uh, and what did you, what was it that attracted you, or uh, uh, what was interesting when you saw the information about Golden Gate? Um, we, I just liked how they were putting together, you know, the, the college teams. I, I think, you know, the, um, at the time, um, both of us went to smaller churches, and, and we didn't really have the opportunity to go on a foreign mission trip. And so seeing Golden Gate's heart for missions and kind of the way they were organizing it to mobilize students uh, really, really attracted us to that. Did you have, um, had you had any theological education at this point or where, where were you at? No, I, I had not. I was, I was uh, just a college student at the University of Utah. And, uh, yeah, I, I, I was part of a BCM and, you know, I'd grown up in church. But other than that, no, I had not. So you come from a Southern Baptist background. I do, I do, yep. Okay. How did you first come to study at Golden Gate? Um, so that happened in, um, let me think here, 2008, I believe, 2007, 2008. So, um, so that was 2000, and then I, I became um, the director of the BCM at University of Utah, in 2004, and when I did that, uh, a friend of mine who who was the previous director had been taking uh, teams of our students to Golden Gate's Mission Week, okay. and so I began to do that, and I did that for several years, and then in 2007, after coming here to Missions Week about four or five times, um, I, I finally was at the place in my life where I wanted to investigate seminary, so I started taking online classes from Golden Gate at, at that point for my MDiv. Okay. And did you complete your MDiv online or did you I did um, not. So I took a I took a year of classes um and then I felt like God was calling me to to move and do seminary and um at the time I, I didn't know where I wanted to go. I was looking at Golden Gate and Southern. Ended up going to Southern. Okay. Um but I originally my plan was to do it online but then I ended up moving. So I did the op I began my PhD here. So 2014, you flew in for uh, the the seminar weekends. I mean, yeah. the seminar weeks and weekends, and flew back and forth. That's right. Doing your papers. Yeah. What is your current role with Golden Gate Seminary? <laughs> uh, 
I mean, I, I am a PhD student. That is my current role with Golden Gate. And which, uh, what's your major in the PhD program? So I'm doing Old Testament. So I'm a biblical studies PhD, uh, majoring in Old Testament with a minor minor in New Testament. And who is your uh, dissertation advisor? Uh, Dr. Paul Wagner. Okay. Yeah. And was it Dr. Wagner that was one of the people who attracted you, you to the program, or you know, uh, it was uh, it was Dr. Rick Mellick who really who really uh, I had known Dr. Mellick for some of my previous engagements um, with the uh, the missions conference. I just kind of got to know him over the years. I'd come out in 2013, I believe, uh, and he he allowed me to sit in on seminar week. Uh, and just kind of experienced the PhD program, and then he, then he, um, you know, began talking to me, and we kept up a correspondence over about a year and a half. And um, he, he's the one that really, I think, brought me in uh, to the program. We have Adam Christman coming in to join our interview. Hello. Uh, hey. Thank you, Adam. Sorry, I'm late. No, no worries. Had a meeting I had to <laughs> attend. What are some of your favorite memories studying here at Golden Gate Seminary? Um, that's, or, that's a good question. I, I have several very good memories here. Um, since you also said you had some memories related to the missions conference, that's right. share those. Yeah. You know, feel uh, free to be open-ended with your, your memories. Okay, I was going to say, I don't know how many you want. I have, I have several really good ones that, that stick out to me. Um, the first one was coming here for the first time uh, in, in around t- 1999 or 2000 um, to train for the E-Teams thing. And me and my friend drove in in the night, and we slept in my truck <laughs> in the parking lot near the dorms, the little grass field there. And, uh, and then I just remember, you know, kind of being here the first morning and just being really enamored with the campus. I mean, the view, the... Mm-hmm. I'd never even been to San Francisco before, yeah. and uh, man, I was just taken by the the whole place. Um, that's probably one of my my first memories here. Also, during that time, which is funny, we were doing a training exercise in the chapel, uh, and we were supposed to, you know, be serious about uh, we're going through customs. They were having us pretend mm-hmm. like we're going through customs and all this stuff. Well, mm-hmm. I made a joke to the customs agent. Which got me in a lot of trouble, and so I was quickly <laughs> ushered out of the chapel and interrogated as if I might be interrogated in a in another country. So that was, that was funny. Um, also, when I used to bring college teams here, uh, you know, in the two thousand four to two thousand nine time, I bring te- or college students to uh, the uh, missions conference. Um, I had several, I would say, even profound uh, spiritual experiences here. Where I, where I felt like God was really, really speaking to me. I mean, I felt, you know, when I went on the mission trip, that was a really growing time for me, and God spoke to me there. Uh, specifically, at one of the missions conferences, I was really praying about uh, the decision to go to seminary and, and do some different things uh, with my life, uh, ministry-wise. And I felt like God really answered those prayers here in one of the one of the worship sessions, and so that kind of set me on a trajectory to go to seminary uh, and such. I'll also say, <laughs> when we used to bring college students, I was not quite the upstanding individual I am today, um, and so I was, there's a chain that goes between two posts behind the, uh, kind of the student hangout section on the back road, behind yes. the benches. Uh, and we were kind of hanging out and playing around, and, and I have a special talent of being able to walk on slack lines and <laughs> slack chains. So I was walking on this slack chain, and uh, I, as the BCM director of my college group, and the now current, the still current maintenance man, I, I can't remember his name, uh, was not very happy with me that I was walking <laughs> on the chain. So that, that was another fun memory of, of Golden Gate. Um, but I also, so when I started seminary here in, in I think, 2007, 2008, I took a missions class. It was one of the first classes that I took. And uh, it, was, it was a good class. And one of the, one of the uh, fun things with that class is we took a 
uh, a trip over um, over by Oakland to, I think it's Fremont, is that right? Mm-hmm. Fremont, and there's an Afghani, Afghani restaurant over there, and we went in and, and just kind of experienced the Afghan you know, culture, um, and, and the teacher was very good about uh, just kind of getting us in the feel of missions and, and what that might be like. But I remember that going to the class and it just being a really mm-hmm. kind of special, special experience. So, yeah. For the listeners, the largest Afghani community outside of Afghanistan is in Alameda County. Yeah. Uh, so, so that was that was a special experience. I also, I mean, my whole, I'll say my whole PhD experience, I think I have loved every time that I've come to campus. Um, and Even just, when you had to present papers? Oh, <laughs> I have one to present this week I, that I'm a little nervous about. But, uh, but uh, I think... Building the relationships here um, with even you guys in the room and, and others, uh, just being a part of that PhD experience, um, you know, sitting in classes with with renowned professors and things has been really special to me. And I will, I will not only miss, uh, you know, th- the people and and kind of the feel of the program will continue, but but the place has been really special to me because mm-hmm. uh, it's something that I've you know I come to for a time I go away and then I end up back here doing something and uh, it's been kind of a just a, a spiritual place for me mm-hmm. uh, and so I will miss the place uh, yeah there there is a bit of a special dynamic uh, that comes from our interaction on campus yeah. and our late night cheesecake factory <laughs> that's right <laughs> That I have yet to go to, <laughs> but anyway. Well, you can take this question uh, yeah. in any, any way you want, but yeah. our next question is, what is your most prized achievement that you earned while at this campus? <sighs> uh, there are some folks who've talked about um, both like a literal award, like a plaque or a yeah, yeah. statue or whatever, and then there uh, are those who also talk about... Um, uh, something special they learned about themselves yeah. or um, a special moment they had with the Lord or with a yeah. uh, a friend. Um, uh, like one of my friends from uh, my time in the MDiv program and the THM program, he met his wife here when they were both singles uh, yeah. in, living in each of the dorms and uh, started dating, got engaged, and got married all while here at this campus. Yeah. Um, which, I don't know, this question is kind of the other side of the coin of the previous question. But So what, is, what would you say maybe is your most prized achievement that you earn while at this campus? Um, I'd like to say it was my Ph.D., but I'm not there yet. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, uh, it, I think it was, for me, the decision to begin a life of ministry and, and to go to seminary. Mm. Uh, where God, I felt like God spoke to me, and and um, and I was listening. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and so to to take God at His word there, and and just what He was speaking into my life, I think that will that will be an special and in, that you know the most enduring moment, but also I think the the biggest achievement, if you will, right of of uh, my time here. I I'll give a second one to that. Sure. A second one I think will be. Um, so far, all the groups of college students that are brought here for Missions Week and how that affected their life. Mm-hmm. I think that was um, a really good achievement in their lives and, and our own. So, yeah. yeah. I don't know if those qualify as achievements, but... Oh, hey, we'll take yeah, it. <laughs> yeah. Part of the goal of the oral history is to get memories and things yeah. that might not get written down That's right. otherwise. Yeah. So we we want these questions to be open and yeah. to hear from you. So, I mean, yeah, for sure, for me personally, it was the decision to go to seminary and probably taking that first class, you know. Yeah. I mean, that's that's kind of, you guys, have all, you guys are all PhD students. You know what that first MDiv class and the decision mm-hmm. to do that, what, what that took. Yep, um, and so that was a big personal achievement for me, and with the Lord. Well, I look forward to putting your dissertation on the show, <laughs> even though you haven't achieved it. I quite do too. Yet. <laughs> even though prices are going up, as we learned today. Yes, <laughs> but like I said, that's a check I want to write. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Before the announced sale of the Milk Valley campus on April 1st, 2014, what was your impression of the relationship between the Golden Gate uh, Seminary's Mill Valley campus and the surrounding neighbors, both your time coming in as a PhD student yeah. and your time when you were doing like your mission excursions? Yeah. yeah. Again, prior to the announced sale on April 1st, 2014. Yeah, I mean, so I've been coming here on and off for roughly 16 years, and um, I mean, I know the culture of San Francisco and, and Mill Valley, and um, you know, kind of, I mean, it's one of the liberal centers of America, right? And, and but as well as kind of spiritualism centers of America, uh, and I never, I always found it odd that the seminary was here, uh, just, you know, as I, as I began engaging, I was like, how did this seminary, mm-hmm. like, this is an odd spot for a seminary, <laughs> right? Mm-hmm. Um, and so I always found the, the nature of the seminary being here odd, uh, given the surrounding culture. And at the same time, I never, I, I don't think I felt like the, uh, the culture was, I don't think I felt the, the maybe antagonistic and, and problematic nature of the seminary being here. I always thought it was kind of just a forgotten sector of, <laughs> of Mill Valley. You know, it was kind of quiet. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was kind of a... Out of the way a little bit. Out of the way, kind of almost a don't ask, don't tell. It's like, oh, yeah, that's the seminary, but we don't really care about the seminary, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, that's, that's kind of, that was my whole impression of, okay, yeah. of the scene. Um, yeah. Okay. And how did that change, if at all, after... The current president, Dr. Jeff Orge, announced the sale back in 2014. Yeah, I. So I didn't realize that there had been such a struggle, mm-hmm. right? Um, you know, to do renovation and to do building and kind of, um, you know, as I'd come here, I always wondered, like, I mean, we love Golden Gate, right? But we know that the buildings are in need of help, mm-hmm. right? And we know that. There was something holding that back, and so I don't. I don't think I realized that there was um, maybe more antagonism towards the school than I than I uh, had had previously thought. Mm-hmm. I think I realized that there was a lot more cultural pressure uh, on the school and even hindrance to the school than mm-hmm. I had previously realized. Yeah, and we've discovered as well that land development in general in Marin County is incredibly difficult. Yeah, you know. Anywhere yep. in Marin County, yep. for anyone in Marin County, it's um, it's a real struggle. It takes time and money. <laughs> yeah. Well, and and I, you know, my before I became a full time pastor, and um, from from roughly when I graduated University of Utah in two thousand till two thousand nine when or two thousand seven eight when I began seminary, um, I, I worked in the construction industry and I worked mm-hmm. in California. I built a hospital uh, in in Central California. And so I have, I have experienced firsthand mm. how hard it is to do anything in California, sure. building-wise, let alone in Marin County, which is like, you know, the top 1% of hardest places to build in America, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. Not, not including all the religious and social questions that go along with the seminary, right? I mean, we're mm-hmm. building a healthcare institution, and it was almost impossible. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah. Yeah. Were you party to any discussion of the sale, any point, formally or informally? No, I was not. Not at all. I was completely surprised when I saw the announcement. On that line. Not that they should have consulted me either. I mean, I, <laughs> yeah, yeah. we, we just, should really yeah. call Jared on this one. We, we, we ask it of everyone just because uh, we want to try to get... as. Full of pictures. Yeah, can, yeah, for know. sure. Yeah. And we, we like sticking to our template. It gives us an opportunity to um, get a full picture. Kind of once. clear, yeah, yeah. It's a crisper picture of what the seminary is like right now, what it has been like in recent yeah. years and so on. And one of the claims that we've had in an interview was that they played it, that they kept the dis- Discussion pretty close and tight within yeah. uh, the vice presidents, and mm-hmm. this is verifying uh, that that exactly. statement. Yeah. Right. Not that we doubt Doctor Orge and his yeah. his veracity. But that's functionally what it's doing. That's what we're doing. Yeah. Uh, 
What was your opinion about the sale at the time? Um, I, at some level, I was deeply saddened mm-hmm. uh, because I do love this place, and I think we can all attest to that. I don't think any of us would say, "Oh no, this is a terrible place. We should get out of here." Mm-hmm. Um, no, I mean this is a this is a uh, beautiful, wonderful place with a lot of memories for a lot of people, and so. There's a sadness when that that is coming to pass. And so I was saddened. However, I was also very happy that I've been able to experience for the last two years coming here for the Ph.D. program. And I think it, you know, that happened at the end of my first semester. Um, And it, uh, I think it made it more special for me since then, right? Knowing that, like, okay, I get to be a part of this as, you know, as it's, you know, we've, we've been talking about, people not coming into the PhD program or waiting until we get down to Gateway, which I think there are several students in that boat, but like, yeah. I've kind of enjoyed being on like the last bit of the ship here <laughs> and then going to experience something new. But, but I was, I was very saddened, um, mainly for my memories, uh, in the, in the, it's just been a special place for me over the last 16 years. And, um, uh, but at the same time, I, I, I commend Dr. Orge um, and others who made the decision for for choosing the mission of the seminary over, uh, you know, kind of the aesthetics of beauty and and location and and all those things. I mean, those things are important in some way, but but the mission is more important, right? And I think uh, for the school's future, it was a golden and grand opportunity to continue Golden Gate's influence in the West, um, yeah, we've already discussed that the PhD program is a modular format. Yeah, you weren't on campus when the announcement was made. I, no, I was not. I was sitting in my house and I saw the blog article posted by Dr. Orge or or the, the you know the, the yeah, by the seminary yeah, mm-hmm. on Facebook, I think even. And uh, I was like, holy cow. <laughs> I mean, I was like, Amy, you know, I can't believe it. I was like, really? <laughs> you know, so. Yeah. Well, it's been over two years now since they announced that sale. And we're we're facing two months away. The, yeah. The campus finally moving all of the, the stuff going on in Ontario and the staff. Yep. Making that transition. Has your opinion about the sale changed since uh, the time of the announcement back in 2014? Um. And if so, what do you think about it? No, I mean, I, I still, I mean, there are parts of me that are really sad. In fact, when I was when I was driving out from Salt Lake City this time, I was like, this this is probably the last time I drive to San Francisco for I don't I don't know what would bring me back to San Francisco, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, so there's something special in this trip being the last the last time that I in the foreseeable future I see myself here. Um, however, again, I, I still I I think it was the right decision for the future of the school. I, I still would hold by that. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I am looking forward to the changes that it affords the school uh, as far as uh, how programs will be run, um, professorships, just, mm-hmm. you know, technology, building, draw for new students, accessibility. Um, because because Mill Valley is, is, is uh, as is... Not, you know, as as comfortable as being here is, it is a little bit inaccessible, right? Uh, and in Los Angeles, though me and Ryan Rendells have compared it to Ben-Hur and his slog across the desert. <laughs> um, that's what we've compared the journey to Ontario as. However, uh, I think it will afford the school greater influence, a way to change some of the personality deficits that it has had in the past um, for really good new direction. Mm. Um, and so I'm excited to see some of that take hold uh, in, in Ontario. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Though I will, I mean, I, again, I will deeply miss the location, sure. Absolutely. as all of us will. Yeah. Um, but but what will happen in Ontario is they'll become a legacy of, of memories and, and decisions for the Lord and degrees being handed out and... Um, learning that'll be done that again will create a special place right yeah Um, what do you hope that the seminary will prioritize as it goes forward uh, as we go forward uh, making this historic transition that's a good question 
Um, I, I mean, we're, I'm you, a PA. You can take your time. Like, if yeah, you yeah, wanna, yeah. If you want to think about it, that's okay. <laughs> um, you know, I, I'm a PhD student at, at Golden Gate. Uh, you guys are PhD students here. Um, I, I hope that, I hope the school will prioritize uh, the PhD program a little more because it is very fantastic. Mm-hmm. It's good, um, and uh, at the risk of at the risk of getting in trouble here, uh, I'd say I'd hope they they take a cue from other a few other seminaries, maybe Southern being one of them, and letting scholarship drive um, kind of uh, a, a level of scholarship. Use it as an opportunity to bring a new level of scholarship to the school, uh, kind of a priority on, on on doing good scholarship. Though I know, as Golden Gate, we have set ourselves as a school of missions that influ- you know focuses on missions, and um, we have a strong DMIN program as well that does really practical ministry. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think it is a an opportunity I, that I'd like to see them um, let the uh, PhD degrees, the DMIN degrees, really drive into the MDiv level uh, and improve some of the things there. That's what I, that would be my hope. Hmm. I don't let, know what you guys think about that. Let me ask you a little bit to flesh out that. Yeah. Um, are Are you thinking increased um, writing production from our faculty or um, yeah. like Adams come in and spoke? Adam has spoke to several classes about his dissertation. Is that sort of what you have in mind, or? Yeah, I think you know. Actually, uh, you showed me. I think two two months ago, uh, the display of writings from our faculty, uh, and frankly, I was very surprised. Um, uh, we, our faculty is writing a phenomenal amount of material and really good things. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I think for me, it's those things have been, I think they've been kind of pushed to the side or, or just not highlighted in the way they should be. Uh, so I, I would like to see those. It's not that they're not doing it. It's just that they need to come to the light a little more. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so, so what you do is you create at the top, you know, people see a goal of, good scholarship from the professors. You see guys like ourselves working hard at our own scholarship. Mm-hmm. You see uh, the DMIN degrees working hard at practical scholarship, right? And mm-hmm. so all that, letting that bleed into the kind of the tenor of, of the studying being done by the MDiv students. Not that, they'll, not that they ever uh, are expected to jump into the realm we are, but letting them know that there is a there's a wide body of work being done here at the top end that is very important, uh, and and we need you to engage with that as much as possible and do the best thing that you can do at, at your level, mm-hmm. right? Um, so I think that I think there's been kind of a divide. I don't know what you guys think, mm-hmm. um, where the MDiv kind of goes to one level, but then there's quite a jump to where the re- everything else is happening, mm-hmm. uh, and it would be better if that was a smoother, more seamless thing where. I mean, yes, MDiv is what it is, right? It, it's a it's a uh, pastoral degree mm-hmm. that is meant to give you a framework for theological thinking and Bible teaching. Mm-hmm. Um, but let that be integrated into the scholarship and, and see that on a continuum with with the other scholarship that's done. So we're not um, we're not just making pastors and, and and missionaries, but we also are making scholars and have some very good scholars that teach here. Mm. Um, yeah, very good. Because I think that I think having that will drive um, uh, more disciplined study in the MDiv. It drives to a deeper level of study in the MDiv, mm. more quality study uh, if those things are held together. But it's a tension, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think we've come to the end of my our list of questions, and I think you've answered the questions I have. Adam, do you have any further questions for Jared today? No, I don't have any more follow-up. Thank you again, Jared, for sitting down with our interview. Yeah, thank you and, for having me. And we appreciate your time. Yeah, thank you. That was Jared Jenkins, minister in Salt Lake City and Ph.D. student at Golden Gate Seminary. 
Adam, I've really appreciated talking with, with Jared, hearing his perspective, and I really do think it's a good idea to help make sure that the, the MDiv students understand what in the world we're doing with the PhD program <laughs> at this institution. Yeah. Uh, I liked that he appreciates the scholarship at the, at the seminary and hopes that the seminary will find better ways to highlight what they've got. Yes. They don't just have these faculty who are doing a great job with the students. They have great faculty. They have great scholars here. Um, Dr. Hoff's uh, book that she, she, her dissertation, she's turning into a book or mm -hmm, a chapter. Mm -hmm. We've got Dr. Wiarda, who's been rather prolific in his article writing. And yeah, he has that wonderful book on the gospel narratives. Mm -hmm. uh, we've got Dr. Durst's recent monograph on the Trinity. And a co-authored work on uh, church history. Mm -hmm. It's uh, just come out. Mm -hmm. yeah, we've, we've got good quality professors writing yeah. important stuff. Yeah, and that doesn't even touch on all of them. <laughs> That's just a portion of what's being written, and it's, it's quality stuff getting out there. Yeah, so I appreciated that as well, um, that he's... He's not, he's not missing it. So uh, as a PhD student, he really shouldn't be. He really should be looking around and catching on. And he is. Um, but I think a lot of MDiv students, like myself, I didn't realize the caliber of scholarship that's here before I got into my THM and took a, a better look around me to see what was going on. Um, I think he's right that it would be very helpful to the life of the seminary, the encouragement of the students to, to know that these people uh, are the, the quality that they are and that they're here with they're, us. They're genuine experts in their field, they're doing good stuff, mm -hmm. and they're helping train new experts in the field. Right. Right, exactly. Jared is a pastor in Salt Lake City. If you are in the greater Salt Lake City area, please check out Risen Life Church. They're doing good ministry there, and they'd love to love to see you on Sundays. That's right. And Jared is a good guy who would uh, be a good person to get in contact with there. You can find Jared's blogging at entrustedwiththegospel.com. Again, that URL is entrustedwiththegospel.com. He's pretty diligent with his uh, discipline of blogging and mm -hmm. does pretty good work there. Additionally, if you are a person who likes listening to podcasts, yes. which... And, and if you haven't heard of this one yet... You've listened through a couple of ours, so chances are you enjoy them. Uh, <laughs> we recommend the Salty Believer Unscripted, which Jared is one of the co-hosts. That's right. Yeah, they have interviews with all kinds of folks who have have done something uh, significant in their ministry, their professional experience as uh, Bible communicators, professors, pastors, whatnot. They've had folks like Al Mohler as well as even our own uh, Dr. Rick Malik on. So uh, definitely go check that out as well. Our next episode will be with Dr. Gary Arbino. He is Professor of Archaeology and Old Testament, Chair of the Biblical Studies Department, and Curator of the Marianne Aikens Archaeological Collection. That's right. And July is a big month for our podcast, An Oral History of the Church. We're, um, we're pretty excited about it, actually. We, we've gotten so much response to our request for interviews that we've got a ton of content that we can now um, place in this, uh, in this oral history that we're doing. So what we're going to do for the month of July is release a flood of new episodes, presenting a new one every week right here on iTunes or YouTube, and, but probably not Zoom, but maybe on Zoom. I don't know. I didn't even get the Zoom. Really? Yeah. You kind of look like a Zoom person. <laughs> I mean, when I look at you, I think Zoom, you know. 
I'm not going to admit what third tier MP3 player I bought during that time frame. <laughs> Was it Linux? <laughs> Our next episode, episode nine. <laughs> Our next episode, episode 9 with Dr. Gary Arbino, will be available one week from today on July 8th. If you enjoy our content, please subscribe so you don't miss an episode. Rate and review on your podcasting platform or on YouTube so that other people can know about this and enjoy the same content that you've been enjoying. That's right. So may God bless you as you go. He's already gone before. <laughs>